Welcome to the Tuscarawas County Anti-Drug Coalition podcast, bringing you open and honest conversations about resources in Tuscarawas County. Now here's your host, Jody Salvo. Hi, this is Jody Salvo. Welcome to another podcast with the Tuscarawas County Anti-Drug Coalition. Today we're going to be speaking about alcohol and the holidays, um, kind of a timely topic. I have two wonderful guests. I have Jennifer Dima from the Tuscarawas County Health Department, and I also have Sergeant Bauer from the Ohio State Highway Patrol. Um, these two are just frontline workers here in uh, our county. Um, very committed to the safety of our residents and our community, both part of the Safe um, Safe Communities Coalition. And um, I'm really glad you guys are here with us today in this really kind of strange format. Um, actually, Jen and myself are um, at home with quarantining right now. So Sergeant Bauer, thanks for remoting in with us. Um, let's just kind of start this conversation um, that A, we know, Alcohol consumption has really been on the rise during the pandemic. And now we're getting into holidays and I'm assuming we have Sergeant Bauer, he probably can testify to, we also always see a rise around some holidays with alcohol consumption and the con consequences of that. So let's just kind of jump in. How about Sergeant Bauer? Do you want to lead us off? Sure, uh, absolutely. Uh, what you just said there, uh, it, it, once we arrive to that Thanksgiving period, uh, we always step up our, you know, target period of impaired drivers, not only alcohol, but drug impaired drivers, uh, basically Thanksgiving uh, all the way through New Year. So it's a busy time for the highway patrol through that time period. Uh, we have a lot of officers on the road uh, looking for impaired drivers. Uh, we implement uh, federal overtime so we can even put extra officers on the road uh, to target those impaired drivers out there in Tuscarawas County. Nice. Well, first of all, thank you for the work you do. Um, I know it's been a crazy year for everybody, especially for law enforcement as well. So uh, we just appreciate the work you do. Why don't you all tell us a little bit about the Safe Coalition first, just so people can understand the work that's being done behind the scenes to kind of monitor um, the consequences, alcohol and substance use, and just strategies and efforts to keep us all a little bit safer. Uh, yes, I'm happy to talk about the Safe Communities Coalition of Tuscarawas County um, is housed out of the Tuscarawas County Health Department as the lead agency. Um, we have Kelly Snyder, who is our Safe Communities Coalition coordinator, and she really does an amazing job of convening all of the primary stakeholders and partners within Tuscarawas County to really work together um, on traffic safety issues within our county. Uh, we really want to make sure everyone drives safely and they know, you know the rules and the tips to follow for safe driving. We're so thankful to all of the partners in the Safe Communities Coalition, um, such as you, Jody, with the Anti-Drug Coalition, uh, Sergeant Bauer and our Ohio you know, um, State Highway Patrol, as well as our Tuscarawas County Sheriff's Office. And we have partners and local businesses at the Ohio Department of Transportation and on and on. There are so many great partners that we get to work with to really um, share those messages of the importance of driving sober or get pulled over, click it or tick it, uh, look out for motorcycles and stay alive, don't text and drive. Those are all great messages and great campaigns. You know, when I'm at the safe, um, why do I keep struggling with the Safe Communities Coalition? Yeah. Um, I know there's crash reports that come out during the committee. Um, Sergeant Bauer, have you all seen changes in substance-related crashes and fatalities? Um, anything that's been different this upcoming year or trends in the past couple of years? I mean, the trends have stayed pretty true throughout the last couple of years uh, here in Tuscarawas County. Uh, we always do get our share of uh, uh, the crashes that involve impaired drivers and drug-impaired drivers. Uh, so even with the pandemic, uh, it, it, even the fatalities have stayed pretty true uh, to what we're seeing here at the Highway Patrol. Okay, very good. Um, 
as far as alcohol, kids, holidays, um, Jen, I'm going to look at you. What are some things we need to think about as adults, um, as parents, um, just to be mindful of? Yes, and this hits really close to home for me because my oldest is 16 and just got his license at the end of August. How you and doing, Mom? <laughs> I'm hanging in there. Uh, it, helps, it helps that there's a statewide curfew of 10 p.m. Um, so holding the door and using your fake brake and the passenger side. Sometimes. <laughs> I always um, kind of hang onto the door pretty tightly when they drove. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or they take a turn too fast and you just kind of think, oh, I hope the wheels stay on the pavement. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, so yes, I think, you know, as parents, it's so important to be mindful of our own behaviors. You know, what are we modeling for our kids? You know, are we, um, having a couple drinks with dinner and then driving to the grocery store right afterwards? You know, are we perhaps, you know, getting together in really small groups and, you know, drinking and, and then driving? Um, you know, what are those behaviors that we're modeling, you know, because, kids, they do tend to copy us and they think whatever they see, you know, from us is the norm. So that modeling is so important. Um, and I think too, you know, even though a lot of teens right now due to the pandemic are not having hopefully a lot of parties, um, but you know, when they are getting together with friends, um, just making sure you work with them to maybe have a safe word, you know, that they know that it's safe to text mom or dad, you know, a certain word that you've agreed on that means, you know, mom, dad, come get me, you know, and that's going to tell us as parents, we're just going to go get them from wherever they are. You know, we're not going to ask questions. We're just going to get them so they can safely come home knowing that, you know, we can talk about it rationally the next day when cooler heads prevail. Yeah. Jen, I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, that is such a great conversation that adults and young people have way before they're in that situation. Um, those conversations need to happen back and forth in fifth grade. You know, if you're at someone's house and, you know, things aren't going the way you know they should, whether it's an inappropriate movie or it's a truth or dare that's gone a little sideways, um, to know, call me, text me, whatever, we'll come safely get you. No questions asked. And then you have to honor that. No questions asked. And, and if, if you do that, hopefully a day or two down the road, you're in the car, you can say, hey, what, what did happen the other night? And they're going to trust you enough to have those conversations and know, you know, my my parents are here to support me through this, um, not to attack. And then that way, as they get older, they're a lot more comfortable when those situations arise to mom and dad call and say, hey, you know, or probably text, I guess. I'm, I'm a little older, yeah. same phone call, but yeah, it's going to be a text. Mm -hmm. Sergeant Power, do you see situations with young people and drinking and driving? Uh, we do occasionally, uh, you know, get the juvenile uh, uh, drunk driver. We do occasionally come across that. It's It doesn't happen very often, but uh, I agree with Jennifer. You, I mean, there has to be a contract somewhere along the line where you're using a safe word because uh, eventually somewhere along the line, you're going to get yourself into a position that you're going to, you know, be in it before you know it and then try to find a way out of it. So it's important to have the trust of somebody that you can call and you can rely on them to remove, remove you from that situation. Sure. And, mm -hmm. you know, and like you said, you know, when there, no questions asked, you go get them. And when cooler heads prevail, I, I guess the conversation that you have uh, with the person that came and got you, whether it be mom or dad or a older sibling, uh, they need to know that, you know, it's not going to be, you know, a stern, you know, conversation where you're ridiculing the person because you want to maintain that trust even after that time period uh, to where if they do get into a second or third situation, they can always trust that you'll be there for them. Nice. I appreciate that. And, you know, one thing I heard, because I kept saying parent, we also do have to recognize that there are young people out here that might not have maybe that paternal parental protection, but, you know, as community members or caring neighbors, friends, adults, to have eyes on children that might be at more risk, 
you know, and letting them know that you're a safe person, you want the best for them. So uh, I appreciate you bringing out that sibling or other people. Sure, absolutely. Nice. Um, just trying to think some things that we might hit on. Is there any thoughts you have on drinking and driving or how about substances, marijuana use at this time? Are you seeing an uptick there? Um, yeah, we're, we're seeing, we're seeing all the above. We're seeing alcohol, we're seeing uh, marijuana impaired drivers. We're seeing individuals that are under uh, prescription care uh, that are driving under the influence. And it's always important that, you know, when you do get a prescription, it's important to go over the the facts of the prescription. What's this going to do to my body once I put it inside of me? And how long is it going to last? Uh, you never want to put yourself in a position where you take a prescription drug that you that you need and then, you know, place yourself in a vehicle when, you know, it says, you know, don't operate a vehicle or heavy equipment. There's, you know, there's always that warning that comes with the prescription. So it's very important that you not only know what you're taking, but what it's going to do to your body and how it's going to affect it. I really appreciate you speaking about that prescription drug and driving because, and you said it, sometimes there's a absolute medical need that you're on that prescription drug. And I will say from the anti-drug coalition, we're always talking about proper disposal, proper storage, um, following guidelines correctly. But I don't know if we really hit enough on, you know, if you are taking a, a prescribed medication to make sure that you are safe to drive. Um, sure. So I appreciate you bringing that up. I mean, a lot of people, you know, when you, you know, you talk about the highway patrol and our arrest for OVI, you know, everybody assumes it's just alcohol and it, it goes way beyond that. And it took, you know, it took some time for our troopers to, uh, you know, to notice and see what the effects are when they're stopping a vehicle. Cause it's a lot harder to detect uh, impairment, uh, whether it's prescription or marijuana, it, than alcohol. I mean, you walk up and you automatically smell alcohol. So, you know, it, it's a little bit tougher. So the troopers have to spend a little bit more time at the vehicle and they have to, you know, they have to go over different signs that they're seeing at the vehicle, how this person's acting and just spend a little bit more time when it comes to either drug impaired or marijuana impaired drivers. Now, the marijuana impaired, um, and I speak on the marijuana issue quite frequently, often, 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 I hear people say that they drive fine under the influence of marijuana. And I've actually even heard people say they drive better, which clearly I know is not, not a thing. But um, do you feel that you've seen an increase in marijuana use given like you just said, it's much easier to detect alcohol than marijuana and with changing sure. norms. Okay. Yeah. In fact, about two or three years ago, uh, the highway patrol here at New Philly, uh, myself along with the Lieutenant actually, uh, devised a plan and it was considered as, and we kind of did a study two or three years ago, uh, how impaired drivers were driving at 10 in the morning and eight in the morning. And, you know, a lot of our federal overtime for impaired drivers uh, back in the day was always 6P to 6, you know, everybody thought that that was the time that they came out. But uh, we kind of did a study and through the crashes that we were seeing, uh, we had impaired drivers throughout the entire day. Uh, so now the highway patrol and there's federal overtime now uh, directly because of what we've done uh, that has come out and give us federal overtime for uh, marijuana and drug impaired drivers that we can start at 10 in the morning now. Right. So that, that greatly assists us in, uh, going out and targeting those drivers that are marijuana impaired or drug impaired. Okay. Good. Sergeant Brewer, can I, may I ask a question? I was just thinking, um, I saw a statistic, uh, on the news and they said that with the curfew at 10 p.m. that some of the drinking and t taking of recreational drugs is actually unfortunately happening earlier in the evening. Have you seen that here in Tuscarawas County? It, it has been, uh, you know, since most establishments are 
you know, they're making last calls at 930 and everybody out the door by 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've seen a little bit of a rise and uh, people actually gone out to establishments earlier. And, you know, just just going back to like Thanksgiving, thank, the Thanksgiving Eve is like one of the most uh, biggest nights for drinking and driving. It, it's it's mm-hmm. actually taken the place of you know, back in the day, New Year's Eve was really oh New Year's mm-hmm. Eve, and that's not even the case anymore. Uh, uh, but the Thanksgiving Eve, you have all the college kids coming home, and that's that's a big drinking night now. And uh, with you know the curfew and the establishment sh- having to shut down early, uh, just going back like 2019, from Thanksgiving to New Year's, we made 27 OBI arrests. Uh, through Thanksgiving to New Year's, which was quite a bit. And uh, along with that, we had like 21 distracted drivers through that same time period. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now going to to this year, uh, Thanksgiving to current today, uh, we've only made seven OBI arrests uh, compared to what we've done. So, you know, the pandemic and the establishments having to close early has played a big part of uh, removing uh, drivers from the roadway, uh, uh, due to the pandemic and every, you know, the establishment's closing early. So I'm sure that's hindered that a little bit. That does make a lot of sense. Cause I know as a family, like we're not going anywhere, you know what I mean? So, no. yeah, but that doesn't mean that kids aren't seeing more alcohol consumption by adults in the homes. Um, oh, absolutely. so that, I think that's just something that we need to be mindful of that, um, you know, if drinking isn't happening outside at establishments or at parties or other areas, our kids might be exposed to more um, environments where they're seeing alcohol consumption than they might have in the past. So I think it really is something that we have to be mindful of. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're really in a time period where, you know, you can't compare the trends of last year to what we're going through right now. It's sure. Uh, it's, it's a total different situation. And, uh, you know, just looking at the numbers, it, you know, number wise, it's not saying that there aren't any impaired drivers out there because there are. However, just by the numbers, it looks it looks lower, but I'm sure there's there's still impaired drivers out on the road. Sure. Yeah, actually, um, Sergeant Bauer, you were talking about the numbers and um, Kelly Snyder shared this statistic with me. It's from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And it says, um, in this public health emergency, 65% of drivers hospitalized after a serious crash tested positive for drugs or alcohol. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, that's, and you know, that's what we're seeing here, uh, the mm-hmm. crashes that we are handling. Uh, and, and for the most part, most of those aren't coming from establishments they're you know they're coming from their homes or uh just different places so it's it's a different time period we always go by trends that we see we set we see trends and we know when to step up over time enforcement uh like through the holiday periods especially and it's just a different time period that we're trying to adjust our you know ourselves to to you know to find out where the trends are and uh, where the alcohol drivers and drug impaired drivers are coming from. Sergeant Bauer, if you're out on the road and you see something suspect, someone swerving or whatever, what should sure. people do? What number uh, to call? Or- yeah, I mean, what, what, mo- to be blunt about this, most of our calls come from the sheriff's department. So people are dialing 911 and they're okay. going to the sheriff's department. I would say the majority of our uh, you know, somebody gets behind somebody, the majority of our calls that come in here to let us know to where we can get, try to get a trooper in the area to check on the vehicle uh, basically comes from the Tuscarawas Sheriff, County Sheriff's Department. Okay, so if we see all, something yep. concerning 911. Yep, and then you always have the pound 677 number that you can use uh, through the Highway Patrol, but uh, for the most part, I, it, it's just so easy. People remember that 911. Sure. And, you know, they go through the sheriff's department. And the sheriff's department does a great job of getting those calls back to us to where we can get a trooper in that area and hopefully either put the car on the berm or check it out, This, you know, the well-being of the person. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I appreciate that. 
Jennifer, what else would you want just community members, parents to know about alcohol holidays or young people? Uh, well, there's a couple things that come to mind. You know, one, you know, obviously we're limited in the things we can do, but bars are still open, you know, until close to 10 p.m. So, you know, if people are planning to celebrate and go to a local bar, um, is, you know, as adults, again, remembering that our kids are watching us, you know, make sure we have a plan. You know, if you're going to drink, um, make sure there is a designated driver in your group who is not drinking. Um, and that your kids, you know, hear that you're doing that, that you're being responsible. And then, you know, most likely, hopefully they will follow that too. Um, also, I think, um, I know with my teenagers, money is a really big deal. You know, they like to have money to buy things. Um, they always want a little more from mom and dad. And, you know, it's important to know that if you do get pulled over um, for an OVI, you know, the average cost is about $10,000 in attorney fees, fines, court costs, you know, lost time at work or school, higher insurance, car towing, not to mention the amount of time it takes to be in and out of court, possibly lose your license for a time period. You know, so I think it's important to think about the consequences as a possible deterrent to, you know, making poor choices. Uh, so, you know, weighing the cost, um, is one of your considerations, I think, you know, is really important. Mm -hmm. I think that you just brought up a wonderful motivator for people to make, to think twice. Mm -hmm. Zephyr, I saw you kind of smirk on that one. What was your thought? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, and I agree with Jennifer. I mean, w when you're going out and I'll even go back to, you know, my children, uh, that I got some young adults that are in their mid twenties and, you know, like I talked about them, yeah, you know, they come back for Thanksgiving. They all go out to to an establishment to celebrate, uh, you know, not only Thanksgiving, but seeing their friends. Mm -hmm. And they always make that plan to have that designated driver. And it's just, you know, like Jennifer said, uh, you're basically a role model to them. So if I do it, most likely my kids are going to do it. And, you know, it's just it's it's refreshing to see that you know, th this process of them using a designated driver still goes on today. And it just, you know, I, I'll sit there at home and I'll, you know, it just brings a smile to my face. I, I like for them to go out and celebrate, but do it safely and get home safely. And uh, you always have to plan ahead. If you plan ahead and stick to your plan, uh, you know, you don't have to play that, those what ifs. You know, I always talk to people that are around, especially young adults that, you know, we, you know, we've had several really bad tragedies here in Tuscarawas County where uh, young young adults, uh, teenagers get together and next thing you know, somebody shows up in, you know, on a four wheeler or side by side and two or three people are piling into this, you know, uh, vehicle and there's drinking involved and next thing you know, up the road, you know, you know, bad things happen. And I, you know, I always ask, you know, young adults, you know, you, you never want to be the next day what if i'll always step up and you know hey it, it only took one person to just say hey that that don't look safe to me or you guys probably shouldn't be doing that that you know that could have some bad endings or you know just you know may not be a popular decision of, of the young adults but i mean it, it's the right one so the next day you don't have that what if what if what if i would have just spoke up and I'm sure that I'm sure that word goes through a lot of people's minds the next day after a tragedy like that happens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I really appreciate that. Um, I think the consequences you just brought out, both of you, are just something that we need to keep front of mind. Um, that it's not something to play with. I love if you're over the tw age of 21, make sure you have a plan if you're going out. Um, it's never worth the risk of, you know personal consequences or that that can happen to someone else. I think if you have those young people in your home, that conversation is just so important around alcohol, especially if there is increased alcohol consumption in your home, you know, to be clear that you're over the age of 21, it's an adult decision. Um, if you're under the age of 21, um, it's illegal. Your brain is not fully developed. Your chance for addiction is much higher. 
Um, so those are the kind of conversations that we really need to be happening, having in our homes um, just to equip our kids to make healthy, lifelong decisions and not struggle with substance abuse. And, you know, from looking at statistics, we know that the earlier that alcohol consumption or marijuana consumption is for our young people, the more likely they're going to have problems with it through their life. So just kind of helping people understand legal ages and the science behind addiction. Yeah, Jody, I love how you always share, um, you know, at some of the talks we've been at in the community, you'll mention how the teen brain is not developed yet. You know, so if they start making those poor choices, you know, to drink or do drugs now, it's harder for them to quit later, you know, so you always crystallize that so well. So maybe you could remind everyone of that. Absolutely. Um, our brains are not fully developed until, until about 24, 25. And what happens in the age of initiation on young people that are going to use are about 13 in mm -hmm. Tuscarawas County. So it's very young. Um, so what happens when you put a substance of potential addiction, and I'll say tobacco, alcohol, marijuana, prescription drug, what happens if a young person tries that substance and their brain likes it, kind of gives them a dopamine rush. And you know what? The dopamine can feel kind of good, especially to a teenage brain. So what happens if they like it and they use it and they continue to use it, their brain then rewires because it's not fully developed, that that's what it's looking for to make it feel good, to give kind of that dopamine rush it's looking for. So if you start that brain development around substances at a young age, you're kind of priming it for future addiction. So your chance of addiction just greatly increases. So what we know from science and research, if you wait till the age of 21, your brain's developed, developed enough that you're probably not gonna have problems with addiction on a substance unless you kind of have a family history. So that's kind of that caveat that changes um, mm -hmm. the situation a little bit. So really it is important for parents and adults to really stress to our young people, it is illegal under the age of 21 and it's harmful. The potential for addiction is just great. It is true, you know, so I want the best for you. So I want you not to use substances until that legal age. And then you can make a choice if you wanna use or not. And I always tell young people, you know, a lot of times if you make it till 21 and you're not using substances, you might choose not to use them at all. Because a lot of times people in those younger years are using them as that confidence booster or that way to recreate. Um, but if you learn how to celebrate, recreate, have fun with your peers without alcohol, deal with hard situations without substances, you're probably going to develop those tools and resources that you can go out and have fun and not feel like you need alcohol anyway. So, um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of things that adults can have conversations about young people about substances that I think will go a long way. And Jody, I love that you're talking about that importance of the conversations with the children and teens, because I've always learned from you, you know, you have a statistic that you share that adults who talk with their children about drug and alcohol use um, have a, such a certain percentage. 50%. 50%. Yeah. So it helps. So their kids don't actually get into that, you know? And so I talk to my kids about it a lot and to the point where they get sick of it, you know, cause I make sure they're not on their phones and okay. You know, I know you're not going to do this guys, but please remember, you know, make healthy choices. You yeah. Know, choose not to, you know, if they, someone has alcohol or drugs, please don't do that. And they're like, we know mom, you know, but I continue to do that. You know, Hey, repetition is the key to learning. And, um, I hope when they're faced with that hard choice, you know, at a gathering someday in their future, they'll have that broken record of their mom playing in their head. Hey, make healthy choices. Yeah. Um, that adult voice is so important that yeah. kids do care what their parents say. Yeah. Yeah. So it's important. I like that you say that. And, you know, I think, too, you know, if other adults in your child's life can repeat that kind of healthy message as well. It helps. Mm -hmm. Teachers, coaches, youth group leaders, neighbors, mm -hmm. all that matter. grandparents, that's a huge mm -hmm. voice. Well, listen, guys, I so appreciate you joining me today. I appreciate the work both of you do in the community. I, I'm looking at 
Jennifer, I so appreciate the work of the Tuscarawas County Health Department. I know this is such a hard time. Um, Sergeant Bauer, we just appreciate you and and your officers and all the work that y'all do to keep us safe. Mm -hmm. Thanks, um, so I, yeah, I really appreciate it. Safe communities, all those messages that you were kind of the click it and ticket and the texting, those are just important messages that we need to hear over and over and over again in our communities. Mm -hmm. So again, I thank you for the work you do. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season and that you stay safe and get some downtime because I'm sure both of y'all don't get very much of that right <laughs> now. <but laughs> very true. Yeah. If you do, I hope you get some time at home and yeah. get an opportunity to enjoy your own families. Thank you so much, Jody. Thank you. Thanks. Y'all have a good one. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Tuscarawas County Anti-Drug Coalition podcast. Please follow us on Facebook and visit our website at adctusk.org.